Okay, can you see my slide? Nampak tak? Can please someone on your microphone? I couldn't see the Google Meet now. Can you see this slide? Okay. So I start with this one. This is the introduction. Okay. So. Okay. So this is my full name, Ayunisa Ramli. So my email. Okay. And uh, you can WhatsApp me using this number. Although you can see this is the office number, but you can WhatsApp me because I have installed uh, this number uh, to my WhatsApp. So you can WhatsApp call or sorry, WhatsApp call or WhatsApp text message. Eh? Okay. Okay, so basic introduction for Foundation Chemistry 1. So these are the course outcome. Okay. So upon completion of this course, uh, you should be able to apply the concept of conservation of mass, atomic interaction, and also molecular structure in the field of physical chemistry. This is the basic, I mean for session 092, okay? I mean from topic one until topic five, okay? And then you should be able to display basic scientific skills in the field of physical chemistry. So then demonstrate the values, attitudes, and professionalism in the field of physical chemistry. And also accommodate managerial skills in the field of physical chemistry. So basically, it, it is include uh, including uh, your lab skills when you enter lab doing the experiment. Okay. So I think you have heard about this entrance and exit survey. So what is actually uh, this survey? So it's a set of questions to measure the level of students' knowledge of the course. So the questions are related to the contents of the course and focus on the course outcomes. So nama pun survey, so you you can jawab survey lah basically, eh, but related to session 092. Okay, so uh, actually before this, I have posted uh, this one to your class track. I think class track awak mungkin dah bagi. Tapi this is the latest one, so you boleh abaikan yang sebelum ni, sebab yang sebelum ni sebenarnya yang patch dulu punya. Because previously, uh, students are uh, using uh, island. Now you are using you future. Actually, island and future ni uh, different platform, but later I island dia akan dimansuhkan lah. Okay, kita akan guna you future. Okay, so apa yang you kena ingat kat sini for your reminder lah. So you have to answer the entrance survey starting from today. Okay, in the new future. Dia punya deadline is 25th of July. Okay, because uh, this one is to measure uh, student knowledge before the course start. So lagi bagus sebelum kita start kelas lah patutnya. Tapi tak takpelah you boleh jawab lah. Okay, by today lah. So nak tahu sebenarnya basically uh, entrance exit survey uh, nak tahu apa yang uh, macam contoh lah uh, let's say uh, initially you tak faham pun uh, what is chemical bonding in specific lah for example dia ada soalan dia nanti kan so normally entrance survey you akan jawab uh, you take pada kurang faham. Then later bila you dah belajar, supposedly you akan jawab for exit survey in week 14, 13 and 14. So logic, logic ni lah eh. Logically you should be able to understand. Uh, kalau tak banyak sikit pun jadilah. Maksudnya level first tak faham tu satu, supposedly after 14 weeks you akan at least naik lah level tiga ke. Okay, so ni maksud survey tu lah yang you kena jawab tu eh. So please take note eh, all of this um, deadline. Okay, okay. so uh, tak lama pun, we'll take approximately 5 to 10 minutes to answer the survey. Okay, so ini dia punya view dia lah. If you open your U future, you click on my courses. And then you click on CSM092 Foundation Chemistry 1. You kena jawab untuk semua kos. But this one is for chemistry lah. Okay. And then ada kat bawah tu EES. 
Kalau slide lama dia tulis address exit survey, dia tulis panjang. Kat sini dia lebih pendek je, EES. So this is entrance exit survey. You click, so you jawab lah. Alam tu eh. Okay, so this is the grading scale for your ITM. I'm not sure, I think grading scale ni sama je even you masuk di key ke diploma ke if I'm not mistaken lah. But for asasi, this is the grading scale. So of course, um, here kita akan pakai GPA. Okay, or CGPA. So if you get A, for example you SPM you guna grade macam ni je kan? A, A minus B plus. So if you get A, you will get 4.0. So for flat lah. Okay. And uh, please take note, okay, for grading scale, when you get C minus, they are considered as fail. So below than 50 is considered fail. So below fail, you have to repeat the paper. Okay, so kalau boleh tak nak lah ada yang fail eh. Okay, tak nak lah C pun kalau boleh tak nak at least kat belah sini je lah eh. Okay. Okay, so this is the assessment. Actually this, this is not ongoing assessment tapi total lah percentage yang you akan buat. Uh, dia pun ada a bit different kalau you tengok my, to my previous uh, slide yang saya pernah bagi sebelum ni. Okay, ni lebih specific lah ada week dia. Okay, ni saya akan bagilah. Later I will give to you this one. So, we have mid-semester assessment. Previously, kita panggil test. Mid-semester test. Sebab kita sekarang buat ODL, Open Distance Learning. So, kita akan bagi assessment lah. Cover topic one. Okay, the topic is matter and stoichiometry. Bila? Antara week 8 and week 9. Saya rasa dah ada dah. Uh, tarikh belum ada tapi minggu ni lah. Okay. And 15%. Banyak juga eh 15%. That keseluruhan is always uh, 100% lah. But this one is 15. And then you have laboratory, lab. Okay. You have one lab. Nanti saya explain lah pasal lab eh. Okay so you have lab 1. This one is uh, ODL. So maksudnya you dah ada lab masa you kat rumah lagi. Okay. This one is week 2 and week 3. Uh, saya akan explain lah later eh. Uh, details dia. And then we have lab 2 and 3. This is face to face. So total lab you only have 3 labs. Okay. Where previously we have about 5. If you want to stick on 5 labs. So for this case kita cuma ada 3 lah. Because of the um because of the ODL lah. Sebab kita nak buat social distancing, kita tak boleh uh, cram sangat dalam satu lab. So nanti lab you pun akan dipecah, dibahagi dua dalam satu kelas. So total uh, average about 30 students. So normally kita akan bahagi dua. Selalunya memang satu lab 30 orang lah akan masuk. So later uh, akan 15 orang, 15 orang macam tu. Cuma saya belum bahagi lagi uh, pembahagian student macam mana lah ok and jadual untuk lab tu pun nanti later lah masa you dah face to face this one is start August when you registered college masuk college nanti kita akan uh, explain details lah for this lab eh ok percentage is 20% so uh, by this 20% it's actually 15% direct observation this is from me I will observe you, okay, uh, we call it direct observation, maksudnya saya ada uh, one new brick, saya akan observe lah uh, bagi markah on how you do the experiment, on your teamwork, nanti later lah, mm, actually masa lab ni, uh, masa you face to face, uh, we will uh, ask you to buy um, lab manual, dalam lab manual tu, actually lab manual, uh, it's compulsory to buy later lah, not now, during your face to face, nanti bila awak datang baru kita suruh awak beli. Uh, that one, you can beli dalam tu, uh, actually lab manual is for semester 1 and semester 2. Okay, so uh, semua orang wajib beli because of uh, Satu, ada nanti maybe ada cakap ada senior punya ke apa kan. But this one, uh, you akan tulis dalam buku tu. Then you kena hantar and then ada juga pemurnian lah. Okay. 
ada a little bit revision lah dia, uh, yang kita bagi nanti adalah revised version. Okay. So tadi uh, 15% direct observation nanti you boleh check lah dalam you punya lab manual ada rubric lah. We follow the rubric on how we uh, give the 15 marks uh, for your direct observation. We call it DO. Okay. So another 5% is peer observation which is PO. Peer observation is uh, observation from you towards your friend, your group members. Nanti dalam satu eksperimen, kita akan bahagi ikut group. Okay, ikut table, ikut group. Then you have to observe, I mean you uh, do the PO for your friends. Then markah tu kita akan kutip lah untuk masuk as 5%. Okay, so ini untuk lab. And then we have assignment. Uh, we cover topic SG. Ini pun uh, I will brief uh, later. Okay, sebab lambat lagi. On the topics pun saya tak decide lagi macam mana. And okay, and you have to submit on week 12 and week 13. So this assignment is 10%. Also we'll have 5% DO and 5% PO. Pembahagian makan ni nanti saya akan explain balik lah. Eh. Saya pun tak, tak berapa sure about this one because this is assignment. Okay, saya tak sure pun. Supposedly, you, you do not need, do not need to enter the lab. So how to do the DO, right? So tak apalah, ni nanti abaikan lah. Saya takut maybe tersilap sebab actually this slide is from a resource person yang bagi. Saya tak ada edit apa-apa. So saya rasa 5% is 5% ni tak ada sebenarnya. It's only 10% based on your assignment, grouping work. Okay, and then Sorry. Quiz. Okay, uh, refer to your tu tutor. So, you S37, your tutor is Madam Farah tu? Tu tak? Madam Faizah tu Farah. Betul eh? Siapa yang bising tu? <laughs> okay, betul eh? Madam Faizah tu Farah. Before I forget, okay, she asked me to remind S37 to do the tutorial, to answer the tutorial question because tomorrow morning you have tutorial session with her. Okay, betul eh? If I'm not mistaken lah, S37. Okay, so you boleh buat lah sikit sebab more on soalan pun lebih pada revision. I think you boleh jawab tanpa you uh, enter my class today. Okay. So besok uh, make sure eh, join the class for Madam Faizah to Farah. And for S38, is it, apa eh? Apa eh tutorial? Who is your lecturer for tutorial? Can anybody tell me who is the who is your tutor for tutorial uh, Dr. Zakia. Oh, oh, okay, Dr. Zakia. So, I think they had a post juga something kan? I think they, uh, she uh, posted on tutorial question. Basically, um, uh, saya dah post dah sebelum ni kan? So, actually, uh, basically it's the same question. Sebab saya lupa. Uh, sebab mostly, most of my class, I uh, will uh, handle lecture, tutorial and lab. But for your classes S37 and S38, I only handle your lecture. Okay, so that's why saya lupa, saya pergi post semua. Saya post pasal tutorial lah apa eh, saya lupa. Tapi basically soalan dia sama. But after this, S37 and S38, you have to follow instruction from your tutor. I mean S37, you have to follow what Madam Faizal Tufara said lah. Okay, so S38 also you have to follow Dr. Zakia's instruction. Okay, so lepas ni saya tak post dah lah pasal tutorials. I only post uh, regarding the lecture. Okay, boleh eh? Sama juga lab eh. Uh, anything for lab, uh, I think Dr. Nolaili kan, if I'm not mistaken. So anything for the lab, uh, you refer to your uh, lecturer lah, uh, respective lecturer. Okay. 
So um, for quiz, five uh, percent basically quiz ni. They bagi in general lah. Normally we will do uh, about three three quizzes, and we will take uh, average quiz. But it still depends on your tutorial uh, lecturer, okay? Your tutor. And then we will have final assessment. Uh, ni kalau previously we call it as final exam lah. Dalam yeah. bukan kan? Okay, saya ingat, <laughs> saya ingat ada, ada yang nak tanya soalan tadi. Okay, so for final assessment, uh, it will cover topic 2 until 5. Okay, so no more topic 1. So later, bila you dah tahu cover 2 sampai 5 je. So for your mid semester assessment, please do the very best. 15% is very big percentage. Okay, and then topic 1, topic yang you dah banyak juga belajar masa sekolah. Okay, so jangan sisihkan lah marka tu eh. Because topic, uh, final assessment, topic 2 and 5 nanti dia makin, makin mencabar lah. Okay. So, uh, week is from 9 November until 22nd November. And the percentage 50%. Okay. So far clear eh. Kalau ada soalan, uh, you can just interrupt me. But do not uh, message on the chat box sebab saya tak nampak pun. Yeah, please on your microphone. Saya nampak saya punya screen powerpoint saja sekarang ni. Okay, for lab session, walaupun nanti later you akan jumpa juga dengan you punya lecturer chemistry kan. But uh, it's okay. Uh, S37 and S38. So basically, uh, kalau you nampak bertindih ke, even tak bertindih pun, you punya lab is actually tu, uh, macam ni, satu minggu, Eh sorry, macam ni? Dua minggu sekali. Okay, faham eh? Maksudnya if you have a uh, lab experiment chemistry for this week, so next week you tak ada eksperimen dah. The following week baru you ada eksperimen. So macam mana kita susun minggu? Minggu S37 akan buat lab on 37 eh. 37 is odd number so you akan guna odd week. Maksudnya uh, excluding this week. This is a uh, week one, right? So week one kita tak kira. Week one we call it as briefing week. So briefing week kita tak kira. Kita start dengan week two. So week two, uh, supposedly is S thirty eight. Patutnya lah, okay? Tapi sebab uh, nanti lecturer Dr. Lali akan inform lah, okay? And S thirty seven will go for the lab for week three. And so on lah, you kena berterusan selang-seling. So sama juga kalau you bertindih dengan fizik, dia akan terbalik lah. So maksudnya kalau lab yang memang alternate dengan fizik, every week you akan ada lab but different subject. On at the same time but different subject and if you ada face to face nanti, dekat different lab lah. Okay. So Nanti further explanation, Dr. Laili will explain lah to you eh, for the session for, for lab. Okay. So any questions so far for the introduction? Ada soalan tak? No, we didn't. Tak ada. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, we'll present another one. Saya buka ni nampak tak eh? Ada nampak apa-apa tak? Tak ada eh? I think I should stop presenting first. Because I have another file to present. Mm. Okay. Our course syllabus. This is also supposedly, yang ni nampak ke? Nampak tak ni? Nampak. Okay. Nampak. So, nampak. saya saya tak buka pasal sangat lah eh. Boleh nampak eh tulisan ni. Okay. So, ini pun sebenarnya saya dah bagi uh, to your class track. I think uh, they already gave to you, okay. So this is a uh, course syllabus and tentative schedule. Basically, 
according to the weeks, we have total 14 weeks of classes. Okay, tak termasuk ni lah. Tak termasuk cuti, revision, final assessment. Ni maksudnya minggu kelas je, kita ada 14 minggu eh. Okay. Sama juga macam saya explain sebelum ni, we have week one, apa. Maksudnya week one is starting from today lah. Okay. So first of all, we like to explain. Sebab tadi dalam slide tak ada explain on topics. We have five topics. We have matter and stoichiometry for topic one. And then topic two, we have electronic structure of atom, predictable and predicity on week four. And then we have chemical bonding on week six. We have, and then kita akan ada mid semester assessment. Ah, ni yang kita panggil uh, test tu lah. Ni yeah, tarikh ni. Kita tak tahu lagi chemistry jatuh hari apa lah. Okay. Lepas tu you, uh, you will have the mid semester break. Sambung balik topic 3 and then we have topic 4, state of matter on week 10. And then we will have thermochemistry on week 13. Sampai lah week 40. And then revision ni kita panggil revision week. You will not have any classes on uh, this week. So ni memang khas untuk you punya revision week lah before your final assessment. Okay. And ada soalan tak so far? Uh, topik tak adalah eh. Nanti kita pergi details lah. Ni subtopik dia ada bagi kat situ. And then macam saya cakap tadi, supposedly on first week uh, kita kena habiskan sampai 1.4. Okay, we have 3 hours. Uh, including this one, mungkin tak sampai lah 3 hours eh. Sebab maybe dalam sejam yang pertama saya explain ke ni je. Okay. And the activity for lab session, cuma short briefing saja. Uh, sebab lab first akan start week 2 Okay, so week 1 ni briefing So you all maybe akan ada session dengan Dr. Laili Maybe saya tak sure lah uh, Depends on her Kalau kadang-kadang dia but Saya dah explain juga kan Kalau you dah faham sebenarnya benda yang sama lah juga akan dia explain Okay And then Saya try untuk follow Eh Tapi for tutorial, uh, it's uh, according, still according to your uh, tutor, okay? Either Dr. Zakia or uh, Madam Faizah Tufara. Kalau ikut kan kita akan follow this schedule lah. Maksudnya kalau week 3, week 3 lah, quiz 1. Okay, you boleh follow this activity session. Yang ni so far saya rasa tak ada pembetulan. So, apa yang saya dah bagi sebelum ni, you follow je lah. Okay, you boleh print up tampal kat dinding ke supaya ingat lah tarikh-tarikh ni. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay eh, ini Clear. Clear eh, okay. Okay. So, I stop sharing this one. Okay, so now we move to our main business. Okay, saya lupa nak share pula sekejap. Okay. Nampak eh? Okay, first of all, I would like to ask you um, whether have you go, go through this slide or have you gone through the uh, pre-recorded video for this week? Uh, supposedly this week is topic 1.1 until 1.4. Saya nak tanya dulu. Kalau semua dah tengok, saya akan terus pergi pada discussion and checkpoint, soalan checkpoint. Dah tengok eh, ada tak yang belum tengok? Or do you need time to look at the pre-recorded video first?
Should I give you uh, time a little bit for you to go through again your pre-recorded video? Semua boleh buka tak video tu? Boleh buka eh? Okay, so uh, kita nak terus proceed pada discussion ke macam mana eh? Saya pun uh, tak tak biasa juga sebenarnya uh, mengajar macam ni. Biasa kalau saya buka slide, saya akan mengajar macam biasa. Tapi sebab style sekarang, uh, they ask, I mean the HEA ask the lecturers to give the pre-recorded video so the student should uh, Go through the recorded video first and then during Google Meet, kita just discuss je which, whichever yang you tak faham, especially the checkpoints question lah. Okay, so boleh tak saya minta um, pandangan semua orang, can we just uh, go through, I mean like a uh, summary for the topics. I plan, okay, my plan is and I will discuss until 1.3 subtopic. Boleh? Boleh. Okay. Okay, semua kata boleh eh. Saya ambil majority lah eh. So, siapa yang tak cakap tu, saya assume boleh juga eh. Okay, so saya patah balik tadi. Tadi saya presenting ni nampak, nampak tak powerpoint ni? Nampak boleh. Okay, okay. Nampak. Nampak oh. minjum. Nampak. Oh. Ada. Okay, so uh, basically uh, topic one, okay, metal and stoichiometry. So content dia kan, kalau you dah tengok video lah tak perlulah saya repeat balik. But it's just for this one untuk maybe saya explain balik a little bit. Ada nampak macam banyak sangat subtopik but actually 1.1 until 1.1 at least lah sampai this week 1.4 I think basically you also have learned during your school masa form 4, form 5 kan academic structure, ni macam revision balik je lah sebenarnya eh even the more concept semua ni benda yang you dah belajar okay so for atomic structure basically ini kita tak adalah nak comment sangat sebab this is the postulate, do you know what is postulate? Tahu tak postulit tu apa? Postulates of Dalton Atomic Theory. Have you heard about Dalton Atomic Theory? Masa sekolah ada belajar tak Dalton? Ada. Ada. So what what is postulit? Apa maksud postulit eh? Tak best lah. Saya tak nampak orang ni. Asyik nak, nak, nak panggil. Boleh tak kita buat... Um, Two ways communication. Sebab you all, you all masing-masing ada slide kan? Okay. Kita cek orang eh. Saya kena panggil orang baru lah. So dia macam live sikit session ni kan. Okay kita ambil dulu nama yang paling atas. Afiq Daniel. Afiq Daniel. Are you there? Mana Afiq Daniel ni? Kan sekejap lagi. Ha. So what is postulit? Apa yang you faham tentang postulit? Postulit maksud dia apa eh? Uh. Tahu tak? Pernah dengar tak perkataan postulit? Tak sure lah. Tak sure. Delton Atomic Theory pernah dengar? Postulit ni fact eh? Postulit. Postulit fact. meaning that assumption. Dia dia bukan fact juga tau. Fact is fact lah. Maksudnya you tak boleh nak sangkal yes tanggapan. Betul? Uh. You tak fact is uh, it's a fact lah. Fakta kan? Uh, benda tu betul. Kalau postulit and you, you can switch off your microphone. Okay, thank you Afiq Daniel. Okay, postulate. 
It's assumption lah. Uh, maksudnya uh, tanggapan uh, delta itu terhadap atomic structure. Sebab tak semestinya betul kan. So kita, bila kita bagi postulat, it's just a, uh, an assumption from delta. Okay. But uh, we follow their, uh, his postulate. Ada a few ni. Uh, sebab then we relate, kita relatekan baliklah dengan teori uh, structure of atom tu using uh, his postulate and terbukti ada benda banyak benda juga yang betul lah okay so because uh, this postulate memang kita dah follow so kita tak boleh nak ubah lah so you have to follow all of these five postulates from Dalton's atomic theory ni eh? okay and then I think this one serasanya semua orang tahulah eh uh, atoms uh, comprise of nucleus Eh kalau saya buka macam ni, you all nampak kecil sangat ke? Okay ke? Okay. Okay. Uh, tak, saya tak perlu besarkan eh. Supaya saya boleh nampak uh, Google Meet tadi. Saya besarkan macam ni je. Okay. You boleh refer you punya slide note sendiri jugalah eh. Okay, so nucleus comprise of proton and neutron. So Hmm, pendek je topik 1.1 ni kan, like the structure of atom. Okay, so basically um, biasanya kita akan, ah benda yang you kena tahu paling basic is standard nuclear notation. Okay, I'm not sure, saya lupa sebenarnya during your school, you belajar dah ke cara tulis ni? Standard ni? Notation macam ni? Dah. Dah belajar eh? Yes. Okay. Dah. So this is very basic lah. So X is the chemical symbol, you punya element. Okay, A is the mass number. Okay, uh, saya tak sure. Kat sekolah panggil apa? Nucleon eh? Ya, yeah, nucleon number, teacher. Ah, okay. number. But here, uh, maksud dia sama. Tapi kita tak guna nucleon eh. We, go, uh, we are using mass number. So maksudnya sama but it's actually mass number uh, where the protons uh, plus neutrons in the nucleus. Okay, so Z is the atomic number or proton number. Okay, so I think uh, yang ni you tahulah cara nak tulis eh. So we also have ion. Okay, kena ingatlah if ion belah kiri ni tak akan berubah kan. Proton number 12 untuk magnesium. 24 is the mass number proton plus neutron. Elektron dia yang berubah kan because dia ada two positive charge dia eh. Tapi kita tak tulis elektron kat sini kan. Okay. So isotope pun yang rasa you tahu kan. So isotope atoms of an element with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutron. For example here uranium. Apa beza dia? Mass number dia yang berbeza. Proton number dia sama 92. But the mass number 235, this is 238. Kat mana beza? Of course dekat dia punya neutron lah. That's why dia kata different number of neutron. Okay. Okay, tunggu keluar jawapan pula. Okay, so ini yang saya nak uh, kita discuss kat sini. Dah buat ke? Yang ni dah. Okay. So kita nak check jawapan lah kat sini eh. Saya boleh bagi you punya jawapan. Saya dah ada jawapan dalam slide saya ni. Tapi saya prefer sekejap eh. Sekejap. Saya stop sharing sekejap. Okay, saya nak minta you all tolong join uh, saya punya ni kejap eh. Saya pun masa baru lagi belajar ni. Boleh tak uh, buka dekat chat box? Please join this Jamboard. Boleh tak buka Jamboard tu? <coughs> ok. 
Okay. Uh, sekarang uh, semua orang buka jambot eh. Buka dekat jambot. Okay. Jangan left uh, Google Meet pula eh. Buka jambot dulu. Boleh masuk eh semua yang lain. Kenapa macam tak ramai yang join? Tolong masuk eh jambot tu. Okay. Saya nak uh, discuss checkpoint kat situ. But do not leave. Do not leave the Google Meet. Okay. Just join the Jamboard. Okay. 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 Ada tak yang tak boleh join Jamboard ni? Saya. Oh kenapa eh? Tak boleh sebab apa? Dia kata too many people. Oh. Too many? Oh ha. tak boleh ramai ke? So, dia kata first right again later. Oh saya tak Madam, tahu. Madam dia kata invalid. Okay sekejap eh. Sebab ramai sangat kan? Tak cakap pula ambil sini beberapa orang. Sekejap eh, sekejap. <laughs> Dah ada yang start conteng. <laughs> uh, kenapa tak boleh ramai ni? Sekejap eh. So ramailah tak boleh join ni. Eh? The site is invalid. Okay, in that case saya kena explore dulu macam mana saya nak semua orang boleh join ni. Eh? Mungkin dia ada maksimum sebab Google Meet maksimum is 250. Okay, okay tak apa sekejap eh. Tak boleh join. We have to do other option. I'm using pain. Sekejap eh. Sorry eh. Kena sabar sikit. Saya ni pun selalu sikit pasal ni. Okay, so sebab saya rasa semua uh, tak boleh join Tapi bertambah orang yang join ni Yang tak boleh join tu masih, masih, masih tak boleh join ke? Sebab saya tengok orang bertambah join Dah boleh Dah boleh Ada lagi ke yang tak boleh join? Masih tak boleh, masih tak boleh. Uh, okay, sebab uh, I have to be fair untuk yang lain. Sebab ramai juga yang tak boleh. So, okay yang dekat jambot tu, yang contoh-contoh dekat jambot tu. Um, maybe you kena pergi balik kat Google Meet lah. Saya... Saya terpaksa guna cara lain. Sekejap eh. Okay. Okay. Kita guna cara manual lah. Okay. So, uh, please refer to your checkpoint masing-masing. Saya nak tanya dulu, you all nampak apa eh dekat you all punya screen? Saya 
saya nampak paint. Nampak hmm. paint saja ya? Ya. Hmm. Nampak powerpoint tak? Tak nampak eh? Tak, 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 tak nampak okay. powerpoint. Nampak paint saja ya? Okey tak apalah. Yes. Okey so uh, kita pergi checkpoint one. First checkpoint. Okey. So sorry eh saya sebenarnya asalnya nak guna jamboard. Ini eh, tak, tak biasa. Ini tak guna pin. Okey. Sebab jambot ni, Allah ya, tengok ambil lah. Sebab jambot ni, uh, mungkin saya try untuk guna time tutorial lah eh. Saya nak you all take part dekat dalam jambot tu untuk menulis. So nantilah kita tengok balik. Mungkin kelas terlalu ramai susah sikit lah. So for checkpoint, one. Soalan dia apa? Masa-masa ada soalan eh, boleh refer slide masing-masing eh. Okay, so for question one. Find the number of protons, electrons and neutrons for oxygen with 16 mass number and 8. Ini lah. Ha, okay. Find the number of proton, electron and neutron. Okay. So, simple je kan ni. So, what is 8 actually? 8 ni apa eh? Proton number. Proton number. Proton so number. Lah. As 8 kan. So what is the electron? Find the number of electron. 8. 10. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. Because there, there is no uh, two negative. Uh, there is no. Yeah. There is no two negative. Ion. Okay. O is natural, natural, like neutral, neutral atom. So neutral the uh, atom. proton in electron. Okay. Bilangan dia similar. It's the same. That's why the eight. If you have O two minus, then the electron will be ten. Ten. Dia bertambah lah electron. So faham kat situ eh. So what is the neutron number? Eight. 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 Ah, eight. 16 tolak 8 lah. Okay, so you have eight. Okay, so checkpoint number two. Eh sorry, soalan yang sama tapi checkpoint one eh. Oxygen 17, 8. Ah, so sama je lah bagi, bagi jawapan. Proton. Eight. 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 16. 16 2 minus. Okay, dia nak sama jugalah. So, proton 16. 16. 16. Electron 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. Okay. And question three. W two positive has two electron. Eh, sorry, twenty electrons and twenty neutrons. G minus twenty electron and nineteen electron. Eh, salah. Neutron. Okay, so dia kata write a complete symbol in the form of X. In the form of X maksudnya you kena buat macam yang simbol tu lah eh. Okay, so maksudnya kalau W, saya tukar kalau lah. Okay. W, maknanya kat sini apa? Bawah. Proton. 22. Proton. Berapa 
proton dia? 22 Sebab apa dia 22? Sebab this is Because it's positive But dia bagi electron 20 kan? So you have to Tambah 2 lah, so 22 So what is the symbol here? 42 42 42 42 42 42 42 42 42 42 42 Mass number. Mass number. Mass number. So ni kekalan eh. Two positive. Eh dia nak atom eh. Sorry. Kalau nak atom, two positive tak payahlah. Hmm. Okay. Allah padam je lah eh. Padam eh. Ah, okay. Sebab dia kata atom. So ini je. Okay. How about G minus? So maknanya G proton 19 19 19 Okay, ni beza Jadi ni negatif, ini 20 elektron So, you kena tolak lah 19 So, you punya mass number? 38 38 38 So, semua okay eh? This one, revision je kan? Okay Okay, madam Okay, madam Okay, sekejap eh Kita proceed Nomenclature Sekejap. Okay. So Okay. Kita buka dulu This one. Okay. So sama juga uh, Kita buat, saya buat summary je lah eh. Sebab saya assume you all dah baca lah eh For Eh 1.3 je lah kan? 1.3 kan? Sekejap boleh strike ni. Okay. So um, basically uh, 1.3 you will learn how to write chemical formula and IUPAC uh, name nama yang ikut systematic uh, naming eh untuk compound okay so we have ionic compound and covalent compound so uh, dia ada rules dia eh you have to follow the rules to name the compound Okay, so uh, very basic is when you have binary ionic compound. You know what the meaning by binary? Binary two element. Yes, betul. Two elements. Ada dua lah eh. Uh, satu tambah satu. And then we have for invariant charge and also for variable charges. So bila kita kata invariant charge, maksudnya Eh sorry eh, ni change eh. Sebenarnya charge eh. Bukan change. Charge. Tak tahulah dalam slide awak. Uh, R ke N. Invariant charge means charge yang tak berubah. Okay. So this one uh, very basic. Normally this one macam metal from group 1, group 2. Maksudnya group 1 we know that group 1 metal charge dia mesti positif 1. Group 2 positif 2. Dia tak akan berubah jadi positif 3 ke positif uh, yang yang lain-lain lah. Okay. Uh, that's the meaning by invariant charge. So uh, you punya naming mesti start with metal, cation and ending dia non-metal tapi kita tukar dia jadi IDE. I belakang kan? Okay. So Ah, ni tadi eh, environment charge Kalau dia ada only one possible charge For example, this one lah Metal group 1, metal group 2 uh, Metal group 3 pun aluminium saja. Okay And then uh, For non-metal uh, Kita macam phosphorus, nitrogen, oxygen Kita tukar belakang dia jadi IDE So jadi nitride, oxide, chloride Okay, yang ni you tahu lah kan buat revision saja untuk ini ya. Eh. Okay, so for example here cesium fluoride, CSF. So first kita tahu CS is from group 1, cesium. So ada positive 1 and then kita namakan dia dululah cesium. Sebut je nama dia tak payah ubah apa-apa and then F fluorine tukar jadi fluoride. So jadi cesium fluoride. Okay, ni yang paling basic lah untuk naming ya. Eh. Okay, so now uh, checkpoint 2 kan? Okay, so for yes. checkpoint 2 So name the ionic compound form from each of the following pairs of elements So A, bromine and strontium 
So what is the name for this? Strontium bromide. Strontium bromide. Just namakan je lah. So strontium is from group. Berapa eh? Strontium is 2 two plus kan? Kita jarang guna eh. Strontium. SR. Okay. So nama dia just letak je strontium bromide. Okay how about B? Potassium and sulfur. Potassium sulfide. Yeah, betul. Potassium sulfide. Okay. Checkpoint 3, name the ionic compound for the chemical formula is A, K3N. Potassium nitride. Potassium nitride. Potassium nitride. Yes, potassium nitride. And IDE, yeah. Okay. Yeah, name, name ni ni, kalau you salah huruf, satu huruf pun, you salah. Sebab kita, contoh nitride ni, uh, this nitride, ini eh, nitride ni, kalau you tukar N-I-T-R-R-I-T-E, -E, nitride, dia dah jadi lain eh. Uh, dia punya kat sini dia ada oksigen. So, salah. So, make sure you jangan salah je nama lah. Okay. How about B? LCL3? Aluminium 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 chloride. Aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride. Yeah. Yeah. Um, get, you mentioned about uh, spelling kan? Mm -hmm. What if kalau macam potassium tu yang salah aja? Like we miss the double S. Uh, biasanya kalau kalau very minor yang tak mengubah maksud, kita masih boleh terima lah. Macam tadi nitride, eh, I said if you change to T, D, you change to T, dia dah totally jadi different. Ah, itu memang salah. Okay. Ah, kalau potassium, macam saya cakap tadi lah, potassium uh, the, the missing one S kan. I think selagi tak ubah maksud kita boleh bagi lagi lah. Unless dia nama ni, kalau betul-betul salah je, macam nama yang melibatkan uh, let's say Dalton's Atomic Theory kan. Dalton tu you salah je. Itu nama orang kan? Tu tak boleh salah je. But later, later lah let's say macam ni cakap you ikut teori mana you aja nama kan? Nanti semester dua you banyak kena tahu nama-nama uh, rules ke dia guna nama orang. You salah je, uh, itu tak boleh. Dan nama tu kena huruf besar kat depan sebab nama khas kan? So nama orang. Uh, tu contoh macam tu lah. Tak boleh salah. Okay? Okay. Okay so so after uh, invariant charge, we also have variable charges. So variable charges ni, kenapa ada dua jenis kan? Dia still ionic. Ni cons because of bila you ada metal yang lebih daripada satu charge. Okay. So do you still remember your periodic table? Kan ada banyak kan dalam tu. Most of the compound dekat dalam periodic table adalah uh, metal. Okay, kebanyakan ni metal. Tapi metal apa? Uh, metal yang yang ni lah yang uh, ada lanternite, actinite tu tak payah ambil kira lah. Maksudnya metal-metal lain yang charge boleh ubah. Paling basic yang biasa belajar is copper. Cu. We will, we should have copper plus positive one. We also will have copper two plus positive two. So ah uh, kat situ dia ada variable charge. Ah uh, So kat situ cara naming dia bit different where we add uh, another what you call it, kat tengah-tengah ni lah. Okay, you have to use Roman numeral in parenthesis. Okay, parenthesis ni apa? Bracket eh maksud dia. Jangan confuse lah. So letak dalam bracket kat tengah tu nombor Roman. Nombor Roman macam mana? Nombor Roman ah, macam ni. Chromium 2 Cr2 plus. Chromium 3 plus Chromium 3. Iron 2, Fe2 plus. Iron 3, Fe3 plus. Macam itulah. Based on the charges, okay, you put the number here. So, you can belajar juga eh, how to write the Roman, especially nanti dia lagi 1, 2, 3 senang. Masuk 4 dah confuse lah. You, kita start dengan 1 dulu. Yang bentuk V ni. V ni adalah 5 kan. 1 V maksudnya 4. V 1 maksudnya 6. Okay, jangan confuse lah. Sebenarnya macam you tahu tin tin 4, you tahu tin 4 tapi you terbalik. Tapi kalau terbalik salah lah sebab macam saya cakap salah tulis membawa maksud yang lain memang salah. Kalau you buat V1, dia akan jadi tin 6. 
Oh, so salah lah. Okay. So, faham ya? Ini. The rest sama, the uh, anion, you just tambah IDE di belakang kan. Okay. So, macam example kat sini. CUF2. F, uh, dia punya charge um, is invariant F minus. So, bila dia buat CUF2 kat sini, CU is CU2 plus. So, CU sebab dia ada copper 2, copper 1. So, you have to add copper 2 fluoride. Mesti ada dua ni eh. Okay. Ni nama cara IUPAC lah. IUPAC system. Saya pun tak apa ingat nama panjang IUPAC. International Union uh, apa ya? Aku lupa. Belakang tu chemistry lah. Okay. Okay, so how about this? Checkpoint. Question one. Name the compound that has a chemical formula FeI3 and CuF2. FeI3 apa nama dia? Iron 3 iodide. Iron 3 iodide. Iron 3 iodide. Iron 3 iodide. Betul. How about CuF2? Cobalt to fluoride. 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 Cobalt to Okay, membawa maksud yang berbeza eh. Make sure if you letak cobalt, C, capital letter, O, small letter. Kalau you buat O, capital letter, dia dah jadi oxygen. Okay, yang ni pun sama lah. You have to take note how to write this uh, chemical formula eh. Okay. And then naming yang tu, okay, you tahu kan. And then you ada naming for polyatomic compound. Okay, you nak. Alpha okay ke for a poly, polyatomic? Yang ini macam mana nak cakap eh? You kena take note lah uh, the name for this uh, ionic and cation. Macam eh? Uh, cation dia tak banyak. Macam NH4 plus. Dia satu, uh, dia polyatomic maksudnya atom yang ada banyak dia bagi satu nama as cation. Ammonium. Yang ni methyl ammonium. Kenapa methyl ammonium? Sebab dia satu metal. CH3 is a metal. Kalau you belajar organik kan. NH3 plus datang pada NH4 plus. So dia methyl ammonium. H3O plus hydronium. Asal daripada water H2O tambah uh, satu lagi H plus. Dia jadi H3O plus. So this is H3OH. Hydroxyl ammonium. Kita jarang lah pakai yang ni eh. Yang biasa banyak kita pakai anion lah. CH3COO minus acetate. Okay ni daripada acetic acid sebenarnya. Asal dia ada H. Okay, so we have yang ni basic lah ni. Yang biasa ni CN minus cyanide hydroxide yang ni biasa dah ni kot. Okay, CLO nampak tak ada tiga kat situ. Ah uh, Dia adik-beradik kat situ. Nampak tak nama dia tak sama. You ubah je oksigen, nama pun berubah. Okay, so normally kita akan letak CLO3 tu main dia eh, chlorate. Yang paling paling maksimum lah CLO chlorate. You buang satu oksigen jadi chloride. You buang lagi jadi hypochlorite. Okay. And then you have sama juga NO2. NO3 minus maksimum dia. So nama dia nitrate. Buang satu oksigen jadi nitrite. Dia ada rules dia sebenarnya cara nak bagi naming. Nak bagi ingat senang ingat lah. Nanti kita tengok balik lah eh, dekat example. And then kita ada carbonate. Uh, for this case carbonate, dia tak buang oksigen. Macam tadi yang ni dia, uh, chlorate ni dia buang oksigen kan. Kalau carbonate, kalau carbonate dia tak buang oksigen, dia tambah hidrogen. Dia bukan tambah hidrogen, sorry. Dia tambah H plus. Asal dia CO3 tu minus carbonate. Bila dia tambah H plus, dia jadi HCO3 minus bicarbonate. Okay. You biasa dengar sodium bicarbonate, orang buat kuih. Sodium bicarbonate kan. Sodium carbonate uh, dia punya structure is Na2CO3. 
sekejap ni. Saya nak tanya boleh ke saya conteng kat sini ya. Uh, boleh tak conteng. Susah pula nak conteng kat sini. Tak apalah. Kalau saya sebut eh. Sodium carbonate is when you have a carbonate with sodium ion. Sodium bicarbonate bila you ada sodium dengan HCO3. Okay. So kalau uh, kalau you tulis sebenarnya. Okay. Saya tulis kat sini. And A2 CO3 Lain pula jadi okay, CO3 okay. And A2 CO3 Sodium carbonate Kalau you Sodium bicarbonate And A HCO3 Beza eh Beza tu you tengok apa? You tengok charge HCO3 is negative 1. CO3 to minus is negative 2. Bila you combine dengan Na, so Na2 dia akan jadi, Na2 akan jadi 2 lah. Saya buat satu je lah eh. Nampak sikit eh. Okay. Na2 CO3, ini NaH CO3. So boleh boleh beza kan eh. Okay. So we also have CRO4 to minus chromate. Yang ni dichromate CR2O7. Okay, and then peroxide, phosphate and so on lah. Okay, for this case macam sulfate. Sama juga sulfate. Sulfate, oksigen paling banyak is SO4. Macam yang lain-lain, oksigen paling banyak, yang ni kan klorid paling banyak tiga. Nitrate paling banyak pun tiga. Nama dia, ujung dia ATE. Kalau sulfate paling banyak empat. Ujung dia still ATE. So nak senang ingat, yang paling banyak oksigen untuk... Um, Atom tu, naming dia start dengan ATE. You kurangkan satu oksigen, dia akan jadi ITE kat belakang. Okay? So ITE. Ha, ni yang saya cakap tu, kalau uh, you salah add je, sulfide. Tadi kan, hydrogen sulfide contoh lah, H2S. Sulfide, add je dia S-U-L-F-I-D-E. D, D for donkey. But if you write sulfide, Ah, ya huruf T eh. S U L F I T E the structure, okay the compound should should be H2SO3. Okay, Sebab tu yang maksud saya tadi jangan salah tulis. Kat situ you salah je satu huruf, maksud dia lain. Okay Okay, so far okay ke? Boleh faham eh polyatomic? Sikit-sikit Sikit-sikit, okay. Um, Kita tengok example here. I think yang ni uh, simple lagi. Na2SO4. SO4 ni biasa kan. This is sulfate. So sulfate 2 minus. So combine Na, Na plus lah. So dia jadi sodium sulfate. Dia bukan sodium 2 sulfate sebab sodium is invariant charge. Kita ikut rules yang pertama tadi. Okay. So another example. Yang ni yang variable charges. So Fe and O3. So nak tahu, kita okay, kita tahu Fe ni, dia variable charge. Dia boleh ada Fe plus, Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus. Okay, so variable. So nak tahu tengoklah NO3. Dia combine dengan anion. NO3, look at this table. NO3 is nitrate. NO3 negative 1 charge. Total dia, sorry. Total is negative 1. So bila negative 1, Maknanya ni negatif 1. Dia macam yang biasa you buat uh, silang tu kan? Betul tak? You belajar kat sekolah buat silang kan? Fe Ne NO3 is negatif 1. So kat sini kes dia 3. So Fe automatically is 3 plus. So since Fe is variable charge so dia akan jadi iron 3. Okay? So the name should be iron 3 nitrate. Okay, next example. 
Uh, now example dua-dua polyatomic. Atom yang banyak. Dia punya kat ion dia polyatomic and ion dia pun polyatomic. So kat ion is NH4. NH4 tadi ammonium. Here eh. NH4 plus. Positive one charge dia. And then dia punya CO3 nampak tak dikurungan dua sebab CO3 carbonate is negative two. Negative two eh. So bila dia combine dia akan jadi ammonium carbonate. So kalau polyatomic, combine polyatomic kita tak adalah pakai um, Roman number tu. Roman tu untuk variable charges saja eh. Okay. So uh, ni pattern dia. Saya buka sekejap bersalah. Uh, borik ni kita jarang lah pakai kan. Okay, carbonate dia selalu sedikit pun jarang-jarang. Tapi yang ni dah macam ni lah. Lepas tu yang ni, pattern dia Uh, kita akan start nak bagi senang ingat lah eh, for naming we will start with ATE the most oxygen that uh, the atom can have for example uh, chlorine, bromine, iodine they have three oxygen the most so we name it as chlorate, bromine, iodine and then sulfate the most oxygen uh, group 6A ni four. nama dia tetap ATE kat belakang Okay, and this macam ni uh, dia lain sikit macam nitrate, NO3 but for phosphate is PO4. Okay, and then carbonate CO3. So first kalau saya lah, um, sebab banyak sangat benda yang nak ingat so normally kita akan ingat, suruh so you ingat is first you ingat uh, ni kita panggil basic lah. ATE, with ATE. Okay. Nanti bila dia kurang, kurang satu, sorry. Bila kurang satu oksigen, dia akan, mana tadi saya cakap, kurang satu oksigen, dia akan jadi ITE. NO3 jadi ITE. Kalau SO4, kurang satu jadi ITE. Saya rasa ada rules dia nanti kat belakang. Okay. So, next uh, kita tengok checkpoint. Okay. So, yang ni tadi. So, eh, sorry, nak sampul. Okay. So, name the polyatomic ion compound for checkpoint 5, number 1. Eh, itu apa nama dia? Barium to Barium nitrate. Barium nitrate. Barium nitrate or barium 2 nitrate? Barium 2 nitrate. ITE. <laughs> ITE? ATE. 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 <laughs> hmm, banyak, na banyak nama ni. BA is barium, BA kan. BA uh, di group apa? First saya nak tanya lah di group apa? Uh, two. Two. Group two. 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 Betul. Group two variable charge or invariant charge? Variable charge. Invariant. 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 Ah, you can ingat balik eh. Uh, apa maksud invariant? Invariant charge dia tak berubah. Variable charge dia boleh bertukar-tukar. Maksudnya barium ni, tadi kan saya cakap invariant charge uh, is normally group 1, group 2 and group 3 tu aluminium sahaja. So barium again, I ask you again. Barium is from group 2, right? So it's yes. vari variable or invariant charge? Invariant. 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 So, That's it. the name for this compound? Barium nitrate. Barium nitrate. Barium nitrate sahaja. Barium nitrate. No to, no, bukan nitrite. Sebab dia oh. NO3. NO3 is nitrate. Oh. Nitrate. Kenapa dia tak ada dua dalam kurungan tu? Sebab di group 2. Dia yeah. invariant charge. Nombor pengoksidaan. Okay. Boleh ke? Faham ke? Faham. Faham. Okay. Yep. How about B? Copa tu Copa tu Ah, Cyanide. Cyanide. Cyanide is cyanide. So cyanide ni berapa charge dia? Satu. Negatif. Negatif one. Minus one. Minus one. Yes, minus one. So Cu will be Cu two plus one. 
So CO2 plus dengan CN. So now it is variable charge. Sebab tu you copper dia bukan group 1, dia bukan group 2, dia bukan lima. The rest selain daripada bukan copper, bukan group 1, group 2, ring itu maknanya dia variable charge. So it will become sorry. Copper tu Cyanide. Cyanide eh. IDE belakang eh. Sebab dia tak ada oksigen ke apa. So IDE ke belakang. Okay so write the chemical formula for ammonium sulfate. Okay sulfate berapa charge dia? Apa dia punya structure? SO4 to minus. SO4 to minus. SO4 to minus. SO4 to minus. NH4 plus. H4 plus. Okay so the combination and H3. NH4 parenthesis 2 SO4. NH3. NH4 2 <coughs> SO4. Dapat eh? Dapat. Okay. Dapat. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, ni apa ya? Ya. Okay. Okay so uh, Saya sebenarnya mencari Oh ATA, ITA ni kat belakang punya. Saya mencari benda ni Okay okay tak apa Okay so uh, Saya try untuk stop sampai 1.3 sajalah Sekarang ni tadi kita dah buat naming Tu Okay, now for molecular compound. Tadi ionic kan? So for molecular compound, um, sama jugalah. Uh, kita uh, yang nama depan, prefix ni maksudnya depan eh, nama depan dia. Kalau you ada suffix, suffix nama kat belah belakang. So prefix, um, first element kita letak full, nam, full name dia. Kalau sulfur, sulfur lah. Okay, but for second element, maksudnya nama yang belakang, yang belak yang nombor dua, nama sulfur dia jadi tukar pada IDE, dia jadi sulfide. Okay, but then uh, again, um, kalau uh, molecular compound kita tambah uh, nombor, kita tambah prefix ni lah macam saya kita ada extra something to indicate number of atom, bilangan atom tu eh, okay. So macam contoh kat sini lah, you akan tambah mono untuk satu, di, tri, tetra, penta. Kita takkan buat lebih lah. Sebenarnya ada lebih lah daripada sepuluh tapi kita, untuk uh, dia punya level kita ajar sampai sepuluh sajalah. Okay, you have to drop last A if name begins with a vowel. Ni maksud dia contoh, um, uh, you ada satu oksigen. So kalau satu kita kata mono kan. Kita tak kata dia mono oxide. Kita akan drop vowel tu kita akan cakap dia monoxide. Okey mungkin okay. sebab dia duduk oksigen so susah nak nampak kan. Kalau contoh uh, for example penta. Penta oxide. Okey uh, we will not uh, spell as penta oxide. Instead kita akan guna pentoxide. We drop the A. A kat sini. Okay. Kalau di kita tak adalah buang air. Dia tak adalah jadi dioxide. Dia still akan jadi dioxide. Trioxide. Mono pun dia tak akan jadi monoxide. Dia akan jadi monoxide je. Kali je eh. Okay. So for example SF4 sulfur. Macam tadi again. Uh, atom at the very beginning we will use the um, similar name which is sulfur. But fluorine since dia dekat belakang we will call it as sulfide. Okay, but dia ada four kat sini kan. So tadi sulfur, prefix dia adalah mono, dia ada satu, monosulfur and fluorine, dia ada empat, tetra, fluoride. But again, dia punya rules, uh, if kat depan, kita tak akan namakan dia monosulfur tetra fluoride. Kalau dia depan dan dia mono, dia ada satu, kita akan drop prefix tu. Maknanya mono kita akan pakai dekat belakang sahaja. Kalau ada dua, uh, you still kena pakai lah, di sulfur something. Tri sulfur for example. 
example lah. Tapi kalau mono kat depan tak payah. Tapi kat belakang kena. For example CO. What is the name for CO? Carbon monoxide. Okay. So mono tu kena letak lah. Okay. So checkpoint. Oh Allah tu ada jawapan pula eh. Ah, check lah jawapan ni betul tak? Saya ingat jawapan ni keluar kemudian tu ada jawapan. Saya tak boleh nahat dah. Ah, okay tengoklah betul tak? H2SE, H2 is dihydrogen, S E selenium. Selenium. Tapi dia duduk kat belakang so dia jadi selenide. Dan dia ada satu so monoselenide. So dihydrogen monoselenide. NO2 Nitrogen dioxide. Okay ni basic lah. S2F10 disulfur beka 10 eh. Fluoride. And H2O. Ah, saya ingat ni ada student tanya saya. Saya tak ingat lah kelam mana. H2O nama dia apa? Saya cakap water. <laughs> okay. Lepas tu sebenarnya kalau ikut IUPAC dia bukan water lah. Cuma water tu sebenarnya kalau usage. Usage water of course dia akan keluar H2O. So dia common name yang dah diterima dalam IUPAC. Baik ini kita nak belajar kan apa nama secara sistematik IUPAC. So of course dia akan jadi dihydrogen monoxide. Even kalau you search kadang-kadang dia dah keluar dihydrogen oxide je. Tapi um, kalau betul-betul lah you follow the step by step the rules according to the IUPAC, the name is dihydrogen monoxide. Okay? Boleh eh? Dapat ke? Sabar ke? Ada soalan tak? Tak ada. Okay, mm. boleh lah eh. So far boleh ikut eh. Okay, so for as uh, acid ni lah yang a bit uh, different sikit. Saya rasa untuk um, binary acid, you don't have any problem. Ada HF, HCl ni binary lah kan. You just tambah H2 as hydro, F2. Yang IDE asalnya HF hydrogen fluoride. HCl hydrogen chloride. Benda tu ada eh wujud. We call it as uh, gas. Uh, uh, standard biasa lah. Tetapi kalau dia masuk air, ada air so dia consider as acid. Bila acid nama dia jadi hydrofluoric acid. Banyak IDE we change to IC acid. And tambahlah prefix hydro untuk hydrogen tu eh. Okay so I think this one is very basic. You dah tahu. It's just that if you have the oxo and ion, okay? Macam ni tadi lah. Ha, saya rasa kenapa explanation dia kat belah sini? Tadi yang saya explain, um, kalau macam carbonate CO3 2 minus. Sekejap saya selain nak tunjuk apa eh. Saya tak faham selain nak tunjuk apa. Okay tak apa. Oh do you understand this slide? Kalau you baca rasanya you faham je kot. Macam for example number two. When an element forms two different also in ion. The one with fewer oxygen ends with ITE. The one with more oxygen ends with ATE. Macam tadilah saya cakap. Siapa kalau dia combine dengan oksigen. Maximum lah eh dia boleh ada is four oxygen. So nama dia mesti ATE. Kalau you buang satu oksigen, dia jadi ITE, sulfide. ITE ya, eh? sulfide. Kalau S-U-L-F-I-D-E, donkey, dia S2 minus. Ah, beza eh kat situ. Okay. So ini macam contoh, bromine. Ha, bromine dia boleh ada banyak. So for this case, ini case Uh, how to say eh? Ini uh, macam ni Saya tunjuk balik eh SO4 3 minor Okay This is different case uh, Sebab ni case untuk acid juga kan So untuk bromine Ada uh, lain sikit pula Sama lah ni Chlorine, bromine, iodine Okay Basic yang kita pakai is this one Bromine Yang ATE Macam saya cakap tadi Kalau banyak uh, ATE belakang kan. Tapi in this case kita pegang pada oksigen yang ada tiga. Okay. Bila dia extra satu kita tambah per per bromate, chlorine per chlorate, iodine per iodate. Okay. Uh, 
Lepas tu bila kita dah pegang bromid ni As you punya um, main dia Sebenarnya senang macam ni eh Tadi eh, sekejap eh, saya patah balik eh Okay, kayak ni You pegang yang ni lah, predict pattern Ini kita panggil uh, You remember this one As you punya main Main dia bila ending dia ATE Chaclorate, ATE, bromine ATE Ni semua oksigen tiga Sulfate, selenate, telerate Uh, ATE juga tapi oksigen dia 4 Nitrate 3, fosfate kat sini je 4 Arsenate 4, ni 3, 3, 3 So basically 3 atau 4 kan Okay, so you ingat yang ini Bila you kurang satu oksigen Dia jadi ITE Bila you tambah satu oksigen Sebenarnya tambah tu untuk kat group 17 saja Group yang ni Okay, so bila tambah Bila dah tadi dia tambah per Per bromid ATE tetap ada Okay ATE tu tetap ada Tapi dia tambah PER Per bromid Boleh faham tak? So you boleh abaikan sekejap Yang saya cakap tadi Takut you confused pula Tadi saya cakap Maximum ATE kan So in this case Tak boleh lah pula Pakai maximum is ATE Maximum for this case Adalah uh, Per kan So saya ubah balik lah eh. Sorry eh for the explanation. I hope uh, you talk confused eh. Uh, again, you pegang balik pada this predict pattern. You remember this one as you punya indicator. Okay. You ingat this pattern. You tambah oxygen daripada pattern yang you ingat ni. Maknanya tambah PER. So basically for group 7A, bila you kurang oxygen with the same charge. Eh sorry, same charge or different charge? Same charge. Same charge. Negative one semua eh. So, okay. Dari mana? Bila you kurang elektron, eh sorry, kurang oxygen with the same charge, negative one juga, then is ITE. And then you kurangkan lagi, tadi dia jadi hypo, hypo ITE, hypo bromide, hypo chloride, hypo iodide. Okay. So itu cara untuk mm, menyenangkan lah untuk you hafal sebab memang benda ni kena ingat kan. So cara senang kalau saya saya memang guna rules yang macam tu lah. Biar saya ingat. Okay. Again kalau okay ini untuk case for uh, this for uh, cases like you just change uh, the oxygen number. We call it as oxo anion. Oxo anion is oxygen with anion lah. With the same charge. But if you add hydrogen It's not hydrogen, it's actually H plus Dia akan ubah charge Okay, sebab you tambah H plus yang dah ada charge Yang ni macam contoh You have hydrogen phosphate HPO4 to minus If you add uh, another H plus Dia akan jadi H2PO4 Negative 2 dia jadi negative 1 So dia akan jadi dihydrogen phosphate Ion Okay sama macam tadi, carbonate. Yes, carbonate. Saya cakap bicarbonate kan? Mana? Mana ni? Ah, ni phosphate. Hydrogen phosphate. Ah, ni ni this one. Carbonate. Ah, sama jugalah. Bicarbonate also um, hydrogen carbonate. Sebenarnya dia ada nama lain. Ha, nama, nama lain is hydrogen carbonate. Cuma kita letak bicarbonate sebab kita biasa pakai lah macam saya cakap Sodium bicarbonate orang tahu kan So actually it's sodium hydrogen carbonate Nama sebenar dia Okay So sama lah macam ni HPO4 to minus hydrogen phosphate Asal dia tanpa hydrogen PO4 3 minus phosphate You tambah H plus HPO4 to minus hydrogen phosphate You tambah lagi satu H plus dia sebab dia tak ada dalam table ni kan Tapi dalam contoh ada Ada ni You tambah lagi Tadi yang ni You tambah lagi satu H plus Jadi dihydrogen Phosphate Kalau saya tambah lagi satu H plus You jadi apa? H3PO4 without charge Tahu tak? Apa nama dia? Hydrogen phosphate juga ke? Dia dah tak jadi ion lah Dia jadi phosphoric acid H3PO4 Okay Ni sebab kita tengah cerita pasal ion eh So ion of course lah last, paling, paling last dia is H2PO4 minus lah. 
Kalau you dah jadi HTPO4, dia dah buka ion lah eh. Okay. Eh boleh ikut ke so far? Faham eh? Um, okay. Clear. Okay so ah ini contohlah. CaSO3. Kita biasa pakai CaSO4. Ah bila SO3 Ha, ni pun ha, macam uh, kita discover kat sini Ca is calcium group 2 So dia dia invariant charge So calcium tanpa 2 roman eh Dia bukan calcium 2 sulfide And then also in ion dia SO3 SO3 2 minus So kena ingat SO3 from, SO3 is sulfide ITE SO4 2 minus is sulfate Yang ni pun you salah satu huruf je ITE you jadi ATE terus salah. Okay sebab membawa maksud yang berbeza. Different meaning. Different chemical structure. Different chemical formula. Okay. Tak Takpelah later you boleh buat lagi sekali revision kan. Okay so. Fact point seven. Write the compound. Dah ada juga jawapan kat sini. Aduh. Ah, Check lah kat situ betul tak? Write the compound that has a chemical formula CSO4 and Al2HPO43. Ah, uh, ni baru je cakap tadi kan? Tadi CaSO3, now CaSO4. So SO4 is sulfate. Okay, boleh eh? Yang ni senang kan? Al2HPO43. Al is aluminium. HPO4. We know that AL is invariant charge. Automatically. Kalau tak ingat lah HPO4 ni berapa charge dia eh. AL is 3 plus. So daripada sini you boleh tahu. Automatically AL 3 plus tapi kat sini kena darab 2. Of course HPO4 dia darab 3 maknanya kat sini 2 negative charge dia. So naming is high aluminium hydrogen hydrogen phosphate. Nama kat jawapan kat sini pun salah. You all jawab apa eh? Aluminium hydrogen. 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 Uh, I think dia ada satu nama lama, satu nama 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 baru, nama sekarang lah. But FATE itu nama sekarang. Kita, tapi tak adalah kita cakap uh, PHATE tu salah eh. Okay sekejap eh. Okay, so magnesium, I'm sorry, name the compound that has the chemical formula MgBrO2. They not name. Betul ke? Semua dapat ke ni? Magnesium hypobromide. Mana table tadi eh? I missed the hypo. Jangan mana table tadi. Oh ni ni ni. BRO kan? So BRO minus is hypobromide. And the charge is negative 1. Okay. So you combine with magnesium. Mana tadi magnesium. Magnesium so Mg is Mg2 plus. So magnesium group 2 kan dia tak ada Mg. Magnesium 2 hypobromide bukan eh. So dia magnesium hypobromide saja. Okay. Boleh eh. Okay. So um, ah Ini kalau acid yang tadi kan binary acid yang simple lah kan. Uh, you, kalau you buat acid biasa. Terabu lah susun nombor ni. Tak jumpa dah nak nombor tu main untuk asid. Okay. Ini tadi nombor kelecer of asid. This one is for binary asid. Hydro apa uh, oic, oic asid macam tu kan. 
kalau um, Let's say you ending dia macam ni kan, HClO4. ClO4 adalah perchlorate ion. Per, dia ada per kan, perchlorate ion. Kat sini dia jadi perchloric acid. Okay, so yang ending ATE, kita tukar ending dia ICE, acid belakang dia. So ClO3 is chlorate. ClO3 minus kan chlorate ion kan. So dia jadi chloric acid. Okay. So kalau ending dia pula ITE tadilah uh, uh, macam HClO minus Susah juga nak tunjuk double ni mana ya table tadi Apa table mana ya uh, Ni 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 Kalau ending dia ATE Okay, untuk asid eh, kalau ending dia ATE, awak buat ending dia IC acid. Uh, bromic acid, per bromic acid. Tapi kalau ending dia ITE, okay, ITE, ending dia akan jadi OUS. Yeah, OUS. So, HClO, tadi chloride kan, chloride ion, dia akan jadi, high, high, sorry, hypochlorite, dia akan jadi hypochlorous acid. Yang ni kalau chloride CO2 dia akan jadi chlorous acid. Okay ni kalau jadi acid lah. ITE ATE you change the ending to the respective uh, naming yang baru lah eh. Okay so ha, ni dia tunjuk kat sini relationship between root ATE polyatomic ion dengan root ICE acid maksudnya nitrate will become nitrate acetate acetic sulfate, sulfuric, carbonate, carbonic and so on. Okay. Ini kalau ATE, kalau ITE pun follow lah dia jadi OUS. Nitrous. Uh, dia tak adalah acetous lah. Sulfurous. Uh, dia tak semua ada kan. Uh, ni chlorous, bromous macam tu. Okay. Okay last, uh, last set topic lah untuk hari ni ya. Eh. Okay. So nomenclature Ah, oh, saya lupa nak tanya nomenclature you tahu yang apa? Nomenclature is naming lah. Okay. Uh, nama, saya tak tahu mana perkataan ni ada tapi it's naming. Naming for hydrated ionic compound. Okay. So it's still ionic but dia ada water. Kat sini dia tambah water. So actually this water will be driven off by heating. Kalau you panaskan, ha, hilang lah water ni. So, this hydrate uh, contain specific number of water for each formula unit. You still akan pakai juga prefix tapi untuk water saja. Kan kita pakai prefix yang di, mono, tri, tetra ni untuk uh, covalent compound, right? Okay, but for this one, you can use this one for water. Of course, water is the uh, covalent compound but it's combined with the ionic. So, it, we still call it for the whole as ionic compound. For example here, uh, cobalt CO, Cl2 is cobalt, cobalt 2 chloride but when you add with 6H2O, so 6 is hexa, okay, so cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. Uh, in this case, hydrate, you have to uh, spell as H-Y-D-R-E-T-E. Hydrate lah eh, macam you said juga, dehydrate, uh, it's water lah, okay. And uh, for hydrate, uh, we also <coughs> can found half water, setengah eh, separuh. Uh, this water half, we call it as hemi. So calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Okay, kalau you uh, let's say ada nama then you have to write the chemical formula must have dot 6H2O, dot half H2O. Okay. Contoh cobalt tu chloride dihydrate, magnesium bromide hexahydrate MgBr tu 6H2O. Okay, so ini contoh lah. What's the difference between um, hydrate with anhydrous? Anhydrous is without water. Bila yang kita dah panaskan. Basically, the color also will be different. Okay, with hydrate, let's say for copper, you have blue, very blue in color and this one blue, dia dah a uh, bit dull. Okay, macam ni cobalt ni pun warna different. Okay, boleh eh? Boleh eh so far? 
So, um, write the molecular formula for the compound mercury 2 nitrate monohydrate and manganese 2 bromide tetrahydrate. Dah buat ke ni? So, what is mercury 2? Mercury is Hg. Sebab mercury ni pun dia ada a few charge. Dia dah tulis 2 ni maksudnya memang dia variable charges lah. Mercury 2 nitrate. Nitrate is NO3 minus. So, mercury is 2 plus. Monohydrate. Mono ni satu kan? H2O. Okay. So, dapat tak sama macam ni? Hg NO3 2 dot H2O. Okay. And second one is manganese 2 bromide tetrahydrate. Bromide is Br minus. So manganese is Mg. Eh, sorry, M, not Mg, magnesium. Mn. Okay. So Mn. So Mn2 plus. So manganese 2. Mn Br2. Dot tetra is 4. Hydrate is water H2O lah. Okay. Boleh ikut ke so far? Okay. Okay boleh boleh. Madam. Okay madam. Okay madam. Boleh. Okay so as for now I think kita hold dah dulu eh. Balancing is for another lecture. Kita ada lecture lagi tomorrow right? At 12. Pukul 12. Hmm. So before we proceed to our class tomorrow, uh, first nak tanya dulu lah. So far okay for the lecture. I mean uh, for the re pre-recorded video, you baca sendiri dengan saya explain tadi. Boleh follow eh? Boleh. Yes. Boleh. Okay. Yes, madam. Thank you. Boleh. Okay. Alhamdulillah lah. Semua boleh follow. Saya tak sure lah. Betul ke um, total now is 49. Uh, may I know as 37, how many of you? 24. 24. 24. As 38? 25. Banyak semua ada eh. Okay. And satu lagi, um, itulah saya sebenarnya um, sebab kita uh, tak discuss untuk tutorial kan. So I actually like uh, for our checkpoint, saya memang akan buat macam ni. Actually I prefer um, you you have to study first uh, and watch the pre-recorded video and during our, during class um, more to saya tanya Apa yang tak faham? Macam summary lah. Okay, macam tadi lah eh. Lebih kurang macam summary. And then, that's why saya prefer guna Jamboard. Macam tadi eh. Jamboard tapi ramai pula tak boleh masuk. Saya tak sure lah. Ada limit tak? I know for Google Meet, the limit is 250 people. But for Jamboard, I'm not sure. Because Jamboard, uh, you boleh conteng atas tu. So, saya conteng, awak boleh conteng. Macam tadi, saya guna pen, saya seorang yang conteng kan? So uh, saya try lah. Kalau you all ada, kadang-kadang you all ada yang lagi lagi terror daripada saya kan. If you know uh, which the suitable medium for us supaya kita boleh ada interactive um, session. Supaya tak ngantuk lah kan. Boring kan kadang petang buat tu pukul 4, pukul 6 ni. Oh, lepas tu apa, duduk 2 jam macam ni kan. Sakit badan kan. So saya nak interactive at least Tak adalah orang yang sama je cakap uh, dapat medium, dapat medium. Okay. So kalau boleh I I prefer uh, if we can use something like interactive macam tu. So semua orang boleh take, take part untuk conteng ke apa-apa. Saya, saya try jugalah tengok eh. Kalau tak boleh terpaksalah guna cara macam tadi. Okay. So if you don't have any question. Tak ada soalan eh. So far. If ada yang terlepas lah, let's say macam nak tanya lagi sekali ke apa, you can uh, just whatsapp me uh, dekat nombor yang saya bagi sebelum ni. Okay, cuma kalau terlambat saya reply tu sorry lah eh. Kalau kata saya tak perasan. 
Okay. So, um, tak ada soalan eh. So far so good eh. Uh, tak ada. Tak ada. Okay, so with that, uh, I end the session and we will see again tomorrow at 12. Okay, please uh, join using the link, uh, I mean using your Gmail uh, yang you register using Google Classroom eh. Supaya saya tak tekan accept tu. Sebab bila saya tekan accept tu, dia apa, uh, takut satu saya takut saya tak perasan. Saya tengah mengajar buka buka uh, ni kan, buka powerpoint tak perasan you all dah nak masuk. Okay. And I try to post uh, sebab this video is I think is very big uh, size dia. Tapi if you really need this recorded video sebab saya record this video. If you really need this recorded video please uh, PM me. Okay personal message lah. Kalau tak perlu saya tak post lah eh for this session. Okay, sebab tadi membebel banyak juga daripada yang first session kan untuk introduction so quite big in size I think and I think uh, so tak ada soalan eh so with that uh, we end this session with Tasbih Kefara and Suratul Ars Okay so thank you everyone so See you tomorrow at 12. Thank you, madam. 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 I have another, I have another meeting, so I need to, to go to another meeting. Okay, so see you.